not sure what happened to that live stream. So I'm going to start it over again. But uh, I'm using the BOA B, the BOA BY MM1 shotgun microphone. I got it on this Fuji Tech stand. It's not on the gimbal, but it's right here, pointing directly at me. So this is a super cardio condenser microphone. It's like one of the roll video microphones, duplicates, but it's from BOA or Vovo. So I had it for about a year, so I'm gonna be testing it again and see how the audio quality comes out since I'm directly talking to it straight on. But I wanna talk about how photography helps me with my PTSD. And the reason why it does help quite a lot is because I concentrate on certain things that I need to do as a photographer. And sometimes those things require me to capture moments, especially when, if a client hires me to do something and I'm capturing good moments, the response from it is just incredible. Now, me suffering from PTSD comes from my first wife passing away through suicide. And then it actually really came back and hit me in the ass when me and my daughter got into a car accident and she passed away and I'm the one left alive with all these injuries and all this pain and suffering. So what is the best way to deal with it with PTSD? This might not work for everyone, but for me, photography helps because it gives me a very good social balance in going out there and taking photos or communicating with people out there in the streets. When people see me taking photos, some people are very interested on how I'm actually capturing that photo. Some people that never did photography notice, wow, that's interesting. What, what kind of camera is that? Or what kind of lens are you using? It interests people, but it also keeps me at peace. Therefore, I don't have the side effects of flashbacks. And sometimes people trigger flashbacks, even something they say, something they do, or something that you would see on the street. And yes, I was diagnosed for a second time. I was diagnosed in Japan back in 2004, 20, 2014. Then I was diagnosed just this past week again. And they were not too far. The UW medical team there are not too far of what the Japanese doctors were saying as well. But what is so remarkable about this whole thing is that I'm not taking medication for it. I'm doing the healthy, natural causes. I mean, uh, supplements and eating right and trying to eat right, but exercising and getting about and walking. Walking helps with your PTSD, but also helps with, you know, concentrating on your goals, positive goals. For me, photography gives me that flexibility to, po to focus on those positive goals. And when I'm, and when I'm in the mood, when I'm taking pictures, which it's always constantly, I'm so distracted by what's going on in the art of photography that I don't have nothing to really worry about outside. I'm not even focused outside what's going on. I'm just focused on the photo, the editing software, and the computer. And editing that photo, and it's so excited to show you guys what I captured and then present it in a video or on Instagram or Facebook. Tumblr, Twitter, Mixi. Those are all the social medias I have because if you go to my website at 646studios.com, you see all the social media icons on the top. But what you don't realize is that when I'm not taking photos, I'm concerned how much quality attention that I'm receiving. And YouTube doesn't help me at all. It's supposed to help small business, it's supposed to help artists, creators, but it's not helping me because when I look at my analytics or my views, my views are going up, but my revenue is going down, which makes no freaking practical sense whatsoever. And not only that, I started this, I started January of this month with four, 400,000 views. I have 400,019 Four hundred and nineteen hundred thousand four hundred and seventy seven views. So where's the revenue from that, you two? 
So that also kind of triggers my P my PTSD because now I'm worried about how much money I'm making, how much how I'm going to survive the next day, what is going to happen with me, and so forth. Now, since 2004, I moved to Paris, then I went back to Osaka, then I moved to New York in 2016 for a very short couple of months until my studio was robbed. All my A mounts, all my camera bodies, my A7R, all that stuff was stolen, which left me with one camera. And I went on a photography trip to San Diego when this all happened. And this is why I decided not to live in New York anymore. That also triggered a lot of PS PTSD memories, which is like, I wish my daughter was here, or I wish I can done something better to change the course of time. I'm always thinking about stuff like that. But when I'm taking a photograph, when I'm capturing moments, when I'm in the mood, I'm like, okay, today, time lapse. I'm doing the research. I'm actually looking up the times of, of when the sunrise is going to come up or the sunset, making sure that I'm, I'm there a half hour or an hour or 45 minutes before it even starts because you never know how long it's going to take you to process and set up. With me, it could be 20 minutes set up. It could be 30 minutes set up. Trying to get the gimbal, I mean, or the slider in, involved with the time lapse. Stuff like that. So I always have to be a pair looking at the weather. Is there going to be clouds in the sky? What is it going to look like? Uh, looking up, you know, uh, the weather forecast or looking at if there's going to be some type of event that I can shoot over and take a long exposure and night photography, long exposure, trail lights, you know. I'm such in the zone when I'm in photography where I just, like I said, I just absent everything out and I'm zoned out. I'm so happy and so driven that I like what I do. Now, you guys might be asking me, why don't you? you work for a professional career. I've done that twice. When I graduated from UW, I went back to Osaka. That's exactly what I did. But that didn't work out very long. It took me three months that I decided to like, no, this is not gonna happen. I need to have somewhere where I have control. And we all know that in Japan society, everyone is working 16, 18, 20 hour shifts, mind you. Some people work 20 hours and only get two hours, three hours rest. I'm one of those individuals that are willing to like, and I, I'm familiar with that concept and familiar with that, 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 that branch of lifestyle because when I was a student here, it was the exact same thing. You know, psychology, education, and neuroscience was just like, it was like work after work after work, you up studying, you up prepping, you up doing uh, representations and and proposals and you know, doing your research studies. It's hard work. For me, this is like it's exactly the same thing. Me not really getting a lot of sleep, me trying to focus on photography, trying to push out content. But YouTube is not helping me get my message out there quite often. And that also, like I said, triggers my PTSD. And Yuki wanted me, okay, so I was the first wife, Yuki's the second wife, we are divorced, we got divorced years ago, almost 10 years ago. We're still friends, we still talk to each other, but the one thing that she is concerned is that I'm traveling, she knows that I'm people friendly, but she knows that people take advantage of me because I like to open my doors a little bit too wide for anyone to just walk in. And that's what happened. I thought I can trust people that I know for a long time, allies. And when I went back to New York in October, I got screwed over big time. Lost a lot of money. Didn't get paid for a photo shoot like I was promised. I could have stayed my ass in Vancouver. But instead, I went back for a Halloween party that I never got paid for. Now, you guys are probably saying, why you didn't get paid up front? Normally, when I shoot at these events, my buddy would actually pay me after, and I trust him. But the problem was not just him, it wasn't him, it was the, 
people that wanted to throw this party at his place. That's what conflicted everything. And when I discussed my prices, I said, you brought me back here for this, you're gonna have to pay for traveling, hotel expenses, et cetera, et cetera. But did that happen? No. Because he had to claim that he had to talk to another party about the situation, and they were cool about it, he claimed. It turns out that was not the case. They wanted free photos, and not only that, they wanted me to actually give my photos, my raw files, to another person to add. So I don't have to add up, just give it to some other guy. I'm not giving away anything to someone else. That is crazy. You never ask for a photographer. Never ask a photographer to do such thing. That's when my PTSD kicked in. I was getting agitated. I was getting frustrated. I was getting pissed off that I lost all this money and now I can't get it back. Then people started looking out for me and realized that I got screwed over and people came to my rescue. So I was able to leave New York for the time being. But when I got to Madison, Wisconsin to deal with another legal situation, when I knew I had to deal with it at some point, I said, you know what? Let me deal with it now while I'm here in the States. Because 2019, I wasn't supposed to be here. My ass is supposed to be in Vancouver right now. Vancouver, BC, by the way. But I didn't get there yet because I ended up finding out that the UW has been using my images the whole entire time without my consent. And as a copyright holder, I have all rights to those images. Now, they claim that they have a no commercial photography policy. That doesn't mean you can go to my website and just take something and then use it for your marketing purposes. That's damages that needs to be paid. So my, my goal was to stick it to people that has st stuck me in the wrong place, which means they took advantage of me. But does that also trigger my PTSD? It does because I'm afraid I might hurt them in the long run, but sometimes if they hurt me, it's not that I want to hurt them back. It's that they need to be taught a valuable lesson. And that lesson is to never abuse another human being for your own personal gain. The reason why I'm also bringing this up, because this happened before when I was in San Jose. A fellow photographer claimed that he had some photos for me to work on. And at the time, I didn't have a functional laptop. Well, I did have a functional laptop, but all the photos that you saw me edit in the past were edited with a broken screen that was dim. It wasn't crap, it was just the light dimmed out on half of the screen. So people were asking me, how was I editing photos on that laptop? That's like, no way. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. That's incredible. And then I was offered a opportunity to work or edit some photos for a good amount of price, but that never fell through. Not once, but twice this photographer, or not photographer, this so-called person that claims to be a photographer, videographer, said that they had work for me and never came through. A few photographers said that and never came through with it. Oh, I like how, your work, I like how you do your, your color grading or your images. I like how you do it with the videos. Wasn't really in the big on the video thing until like, I don't know, recently. I did video in the past, trust me, I did video in the past before, but recently it got into it more and more and more and more and more, getting back into memorizing how to use, because all these programs are changing all the time, especially Premiere. So it's, it's an ongoing situation with Premiere. So, and not only that, I'm a travel photographer and I have to live at a travel photographer's budget. Some people have the wrong impressions or the wrong assumptions about me. And they don't actually understand those assumptions. They are trying to force upon myself. You can't give me advice or make assumptions when you don't even know who I am or understand where I come from. You don't read my Facebook. You don't read my Instagram. You don't go to my website. Ask those same people, how many languages do I speak? What's my favorite color? They don't know, but it's on my, it's on my Facebook. It's on my Instagram. It's obviously Panda Photography. I love black and white. Hello, I'm wearing black and white all the time. 
Now and then you will see me wear blue, you see me wear red, you see me wear pink. But most of the time, it's white shirt, bow ties. Everyone knows I love the bow ties, right? Colorful bow ties. It's the only thing that is really colorful. Bow ties or ties. And everyone knows that I love sake and soju. What made you something I like? What is it? What is, I don't know, some beer. I don't even know what to call it. I forgot what it was called. See, not only that, I've been accused of being a crackhead. Mind you, if you didn't see the video of the client from hell back in San Jose, she thought I was a drug addict or a crackhead. I don't trust people because you look like you're a thief, you look like you're about to steal something, you look like you, you're on drugs. She didn't think about my personality, she didn't think about my education, she didn't want to do a background check, even though I'm, I'm, if you Google the panda photographer, that's the first search that comes up. All my social medias, my schooling, everything. But no, she made an assumption based on my teeth. So I was like, I got into a car accident, I don't want to wear my dentures because I feel like, and sometimes the dentures, actually I lost those, but it doesn't matter. They kind of like make my mouth feel all puffy, like, a little, just pokes out a little bit more. It was just an uncomfortable experience. So I was like, I don't wear them because of that. But, you know, I only got dentures that I could afford. See, if I got some really high premium dentures, I'm pretty sure they fit nice and perfect and comfortable. Even though, yeah, I went to a dentist. The dentist said I should be wearing them more often, but no. I like who I am. If people don't accept me for who I am, then be gone. That's how I deal with my PT PTSD, is that I try to find ways to how to cure myself with the art of photography or dealing with my situations based on, as a human to human being, communication. I'm not the one to disrespect people. I can't really do that unless someone comes at me like this morning when this homeless man that I see all the freaking time asking for cigarettes is deuce. I don't have cigarettes, so please refrain from stop asking me for it. You, I see you all the time. You, you, you have all this gear, this, this camera equipment and shit. He started cursing, being a belligerent. Mind you, I'm across the street from the Starbucks at the Capitol. He comes back two minutes later with a big stick. I don't even know where he got the stick. He must have pulled it off the tree and got mad and was trying to hit me with it. And as someone of me, a black belt in jiu-jitsu and judo, I reframed him. But I was the one being arrested and handcuffs put in the car. Mind you, that the guy wasn't had handcuffed yet. Everyone was pointing to that guy. Oh, it was that guy, it was that guy. He attacked the black guy. But I'm the one being prosecuted for the next seven minutes. It took them seven minutes to decide to arrest the other guy. The guy could have ran off and just like, Phew. and I could have been in, in jail. But lucky for me, I was holding my documents. And they asked me, am I a resident or a guest? I said, I'm a guest dealing with my legal stuff right now. So why are you handcuffed to me? That's when my PTSD came, kicked in. I was concerned this morning and worried, but as long as I dealt with my PTSD, I know how to actually control my, my, my rages or my worries sometimes. Well, not really my worries because I still worry about what if my daughter was still alive? What would, what would the change of course in my lifetime? But when they find out that from another police officer about another issue that I had, it's like, oh, that's the pen photographer guy. He's cool, what, what happened? That officer came down with she was supervisor. Said, oh yeah, we met. Oh, no, no, what happened? I told her, she uncuffed me. I had to take another officer to uncuff me. To explain to her, this guy attacked me because I didn't have a cigarette. So uh, the larger of the story was, this homeless man wanted me to go buy him cigarettes, which I have no money to do that. And I wouldn't want to do that anyway. Why would I want to contribute to your, with your, to your stuff? That's just, no. So, I'd rather that person smoke marijuana than smoke cigarettes, I'm, to be honest with you. Because cigarettes is just 
it too. It kills. Just be honest. It it kills. So, but you know, after all is done, I got this the, the, the Madison police car, the case number. The guy was arrested for attempted robbery, battery assault, and now I have to deal with that as well as my PT, my PTSD. But this is how photography helps me deal with my P PTSD. The reason why I'm also dealing with P my PTSD at the moment is because I'm worried that I might not be able to review this lens. Now, I was promised a camera body, a Canon, so I can review this lens, but now I'm getting worried that I can't do it because of a legal situation here in Madison. So, and I have this beautiful, <laughs> Brand new Iris 150 lens. Well crafted, by the way. Built like a tank. And it's beautiful, mind you. It is so darn beautiful. Focus starts a little bit long. But, so, so worth it. Now, it's a manual lens, but you do get contacts. To read your aperture. But it's a manual focus lens, and it's great. Uh, build quality wise, it's great, but not optically because I haven't tested it yet. But I want to test this. I have 20 days left to test this and before I send it back. And I just don't have the luxury to rent a camera because right now, money's not coming in for photography. That's when my PTSD kicks in. I'm concerned, I'm worried, why I'm not receiving, you know, the views on YouTube. YouTube is not helping small creators or small businesses or small artists like myself. Like they so-called said they do or claim to do. Like that commercial that you see when you boot up your YouTube channel. It's about that dog commercial. I see that commercial all the time, right? Why is YouTube showing that YouTube helps with small businesses? Does it? It's really, it's really not helping because as a small business for me as a photographer, it's actually decreasing my business and it's hurting my business. When you don't get my message out there, when I make videos like this, it not, it's not being shared. It's not just YouTube, it's the audience as well. When I ask to please share, like, and subscribe, people are not sharing, people are not liking, people are not leaving their thoughts and comments. When you do that, it sends off a transmission signal to the A-Bot that YouTube is using, saying that, oh, People are responding to this comment, he's responding to, I just respond to every single comment. But it takes you guys to share the content. But this is what I'm going back on previously, what I said about photographers, that I thought I had allies. I only have some, and I don't. Those that I thought they were allies mistreated me and said things badly, and now pretend like they better than me or better than everyone else. And the point is, you're not. You just like me and everyone else. You may have money, but you probably don't have the personality. If you like me, you know that I'm a people's person. Any one of my Japanese, Korean friends, anyone from Paris would tell you, anyone from New York would tell you, I'm a people's person. Just don't screw me over. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one that's going to be crying and apologizing. But when people attacked me recently in the past couple of months, the last two months, talking about, give me bad suggestions, by the way. I keep telling them those things don't really apply to me. As a dual citizen, as a dual passport holder, they don't travel. They don't understand the, the, the consequences or the situation at hand when you're traveling, okay? When you're traveling, you're traveling because it's not a drill rush that I'm seeking. It's that PTSD helps if an individual is actually always doing something positive and always at about. And always constantly pushing themselves, reading some comments here, pushing themselves and not focus on the dramatic effects that happened in the past. And that's what happens with me, with my PTSD. Is that I think about my daughter too much to a point where 
sometimes I really go way beyond comics where I think I have superpowers I can bring her back to life and we can be a tag team super duo hero team. Me and my daughter, just only, we be the Dragon Ball. I be Vegeta, she can be the Goku. Because I'm a Vegeta fan. But I know she's more of a Booma fan. She likes Booma. She used, she likes Booma. Okay. But for me, I'm, that's just me. Because I miss her a lot. So my PTSD does kick in quite daily. But it's not severe. Only things that make it severe is like what happened this morning or where I'm not receiving donations, donations, which I, that's not really, I hope that I get donations because when I wake up in the or when I wake up or when I'm walking in the morning when I don't have Wi-Fi to access my emails and everything like that, I'm just hoping that I can get a little bit to get by because winter times are the worst times for me. This is when business is slow, there's no one coming in. Not only that, my camera died not too long ago. And I've been trying to, trying to so badly to save up for a camera. And every time I try to save up for a camera, bills get in the way. Something gets in the way. Paying for the website, paying for this, paying for that. Gotta push myself to do this. But I do everything alone because I'm a one man on it. But I do everything for a reason. I wanna be my own person. Some of you guys that do know me, Say, why don't you go, go back home and live with your parents? Like, let them give back your trust fund. Listen, this is why money is not everything. And I wish I had the money now. Because I recently did ask them to loan me another $1,000. And it wasn't for legal fees. It's to buy a new camera. And they immediately did not apply to it. I know because I read the email from MSN. And I can see when they can read it. And they read it, but didn't apply. That means no. No. I'm still disowned. No matter how you look at it. My parents only came to my need here because they knew that the taxes and all that stuff is a federal crime. And for me, for them to accuse me of not paying the taxes when I didn't really make anything last year. Because last year I made under 8000 and I was just barely afloat. So, why, did, why is the US government attacking me saying I owe taxes when I didn't actually, I don't really, oh, I did the taxes last year. I didn't even do them last year. Yuki did the taxes last year. And they were absolutely correct. It, this is the way in how government wants to get more money out of you. That also triggers my P, PTSD. Worrying about all this stuff. Worrying about what's going to happen to me t the next day. What's going to happen to me tomorrow. Where I'm going to eat. I don't eat for three days in a row because I want to save money up for a new camera. That's the sacrifices that I have to go through. And as a pescetarian vegan, I have to make sacrifices. Out. Sometimes the longest I went without food was the eight days when I was in San Jose. Eight days without food. And when I actually ate something, I swear to you. Now, mind you, I lost my sense of smell in a car accident. And parts of my taste, I got a, a plate in my jaw that moves. Gee, <laughs> that's creepy. I, I, but anyway, check this out. When I ate something, I swear to you, my taste buds were like 100% or 150%. I can literally taste that that vegan burrito that I was eating. You guys know if you watch my vlogs in the past, I like to go to Safeway and get those vegan burritos. Oh, it was so memorizing. Mm. Mm. But this goes back to now. When's the last time I ate? Three days ago. Why you do that to yourself? It's not that I personally do that to myself and force myself not to eat. It's just like, one, I'm in Wisconsin. Everybody knows in Wisconsin, there's nothing but cheese and meat in the winter times. Sometimes the farmers markets, the farmers come out because now their crop is growing or they start to sell vegetables. And you guys have seen, if you ever seen the 2016 logs, 
from Madison to Farmer's Market. Come on, it's so beautiful and wonderful to go there and just pick up any type of vegetable and just cook it up. And this is to stay here at the International Hostel, which now they don't even require 30 days stay anymore because these homeless men messed that up for us travelers and us international travelers. Now this particular hostel doesn't allow no more than 14 days in a calendar year. Some hostels last 14 days for summer and winter. So you have two opportunities. But this hostel, which I've been coming in for years since I graduated, doesn't allow me because now new management is involved and now they want to change the whole policy. It used to be 30 days. Now it's 14 days. That concerns me where I'm going to stay, where I'm going to be. What also concerns me is that, you know, I'm in, I'm in a state that I thought I felt safe, but I don't feel as safe as I would like to feel safe. Because I always talk positive about Madison, Wisconsin being a safe place. Ever since I was a student here, I felt like this was the best place. It made me because I had a home and I was a student, I had a roof on my head, but now I'm not a resident anymore. It's been, what, almost seven years? It's different. Everything has changed quite a bit. But for me, it's that problem that rose in my, P my PTSD. I'm concerned about how the people look at me as a whole, not as a human being. They don't look at me as a human being sometimes here. They look at me as, oh, oh, you, you don't have a home. Oh, never mind. What do you mean, never mind? You don't know who walks through these doors every day. I might have seven PhDs. I might have 12 PhDs, but I have an education doctorate and PhD, but people don't ask me until they look at my YouTube or my Facebook account and be like, oh my, I was talking to this person, oh my God, I made a fool of myself. And then I hear an apology, it does happen off and on once in a while, but I don't get apologies from photographers that disrespect me in the past, knowing that I was right about everything about me. You know what I mean? When I try to be very transparent about everything, I try to be. But it seems like people want to use that against me as a weapon. My, my symptoms are not your personal weapon to use for your personal gain. And that's what I felt about a lot of photographers that I don't talk to anymore. This is why I don't even trust certain photographers that I talk to. If you're not on my Facebook, then you know why. If I never actually accepted your friend request, then you know why. Or you never, you never bothered to actually send me a friend request because either you just don't care or you're too busy or you don't have the time. But for me, photography helps me deal with all those problems. Like I said in the beginning of this video, it, when I'm actually going out there shooting, I'm so zoned in that like I absent everything out. Even my doctor, even the doctors here said, what do you do to actually, if you're not taking medication, what do you do to treat it? Photography. He thought about it for a second and said, huh, I never thought that would be an option. But what, it does, it, what does it do for you, for you? Puts me in the right condition, the right mindset the right motivation. It makes me happy that I can go out and shoot and shoot daily every single day. I can't be working in a cubicle. That would just make my, PS my PTSD worse. I tried it, it just makes it worse. That's why I couldn't work in the work office. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I had two professional job opportunities that I had worked for an analyst company in Japan and one here. And it didn't work out because it just stressed me out. I was, I was figuring, I was doing things I shouldn't been doing. And when I'm in photography, it keeps me in check. Believe it or not, like I said in the beginning of this video, it may not work for you, but photography gives me the opportunity to understand the structural concept of composition, the rule of thirds, how to get great 
a, a exposure, how to take portraits, how to do landscape. And I'm just not a photographer that just do one category. I like to do them all. I like to do long exposures, time lapses, hyper lapses. You ever seen one of my time lapses? You see me travel out quite a bit. It took me two and a half years just to do one video of the time lapse. Put that all together. It took me that long to do it. Two years to go to one state, to get, and mind you, that camera that I did, my Sony A77 that died, has 700,848 actuations. That's how many images I have taken with that camera doing the time lapses. And it died. Now my PTSD kicks in because I want, I want to shoot. I want to shoot. I want to go out there and shoot. I want to test this lens. So badly, I can't even rent. A, I can't even borrow a camera from the UW because of a legal issue I have with them right now. So that's the end of that. And you know, I put out a press conference about me holding this event here for anyone with Canon can use the camera, so I can get some footage and some feedback about the lens. But no one showed up. But everyone's watching my Instagram. Everyone wants me to go out to them. But this is the safest place to be for this event. There's cameras, there's a safe place, there's an upstairs where you can take beautiful portraits and there's a big giant window surrounding the whole entire place. There's a, so much light coming in there, you would not have to worry about ISO performance. I swear to you. But no, people want me to go to the, all the way to Middleton to do to some person's house. I'm not taking risks when I don't know this person. I'm not that desperate to get people to come out to talk with me. Yeah, I get lonely sometimes, and I want to talk to people. But sometimes I don't want to talk to everyone because everyone has bad attention sometimes. And you can feel the bad energy sometimes. And like I said, winter times are just the worst for me. There's no business really coming in. I lost five opportunities to work and take portraits this winter. But my freaking camera died. My camera died. There's nothing I can do about it until I save up money to get a new one. So, like I said guys, I do the best I can. I want to be my own man, but I also want to be responsible for my own actions. This is why I deal with my own actions my own way because I know how to deal with it professionally. This is why my Lori Laura, she's like, I'm impressed that you survived this long. Fucking two and a half years since New York incident and you, you don't look, every time I walk in this library, I have the people say, you're always so fresh and so organized and so well dressed. Not many people that are houseless, see, I'm not homeless. See, the difference is homeless and houseless is I could go back to Osaka if I wanted to, but I want to be my own man. There's no, there's not being an old man when you're with your parents, especially your parents paying for everything. No. And me and my parents don't agree to what I'm doing, but I love them. I know they do love me still, even though they're not my real parents, but they gotta understand that photography is the only thing since, I, since NAMI that's made me acceptable in life. This is where I can fit in somewhere. This is gonna help me deal with my own problems. I don't want medication to deal with my PTSD. I don't want none of that stuff. Eating healthy, eating right, fasting correctly, making sure you got the right body nutrition in your body, make sure that you have the right body content fat, Make sure you're not eating anything that you should not be eating. Because all these chemicals and all this stuff in the, in the States, to be honest, you gotta watch out for. That stuff is not healthy. Did you know obesity is no, the number one death? One of the top rated of what? Five, five illnesses that you can die from in the States? Obesity is one of them. That, 
I refuse to let that conquer me. If anything else, I'd rather die a natural death than die eating a fucking a a a two thousand dollar fatty greasy burrito hamburger. I don't know. It, some some guy made a greasy burrito hamburger burrito, which is stupid. It's like, uh, great 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 concept, but not for everyone. Sorry, but for me, photography makes me feel like I'm whole. That I'm part of something more important. That I can do something in this category. Accomplish goals. I made, let me tell you how many videos I made. I'm going to tell you right now how many videos. Uh, I made, what is it? Where is it? 432 videos. Now, I post videos daily, but YouTube doesn't help me grow. When they claim to help small artists and small business people like myself grow, they actually are hurting my business. They are hurting me. But also what helps hurts me is community. The community doesn't share my experience or share my thoughts. But it's really hard to get these words out to express it without using Blah, 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 blah. without making a mistake and I feel like I do need to apologize if this is longer than expected but it just helps me to develop a, a social skill but photography does help me with my P PTSD it does get me where I need to be uh, so I'm grateful for photography, but how do you deal with your PTSD if you are diagnosed with it? So with that said, everyone, I post a lot of videos this week and even shot with a, a Nikon D7100. It's been a while since I shot with that camera. Holy crap. It's been a couple of years, four years. So. Yeah, about four or five, three, yeah, about four years. But, if you guys want to watch all the content on my channel, please do. If you like it, like it. If, if, you, if you don't like it, just let me know what I did wrong. That's all. You don't have to go crazy with the comments like some people. Complain that I was actually recording in a public library, which is that's what it's for. <laughs> Well, students, this is this is a video about the Philips HP headphones that were stolen in Portland, by the way. And the guy made a comment saying, "By by definition, when using a back a back over uh, headphones, you're letting people hear. I know that. I said that in the video. If you watch my first unboxing, but which he didn't, I understood. This is why I never blast my headphones no more than 40 decibels." But then again, people just make comments for no reason just to hate. Because either they're jealous or they just mad because they didn't get, they didn't, you beat them to the punch. I don't know. Because there's some such thing as beating someone to the punch. You can make your own content. Just buy the damn headphones and make your own videos. But with that said, everyone, I just wanted to talk about how photography, how to move my, how photography, oh, no, 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 I'm tired, helps me with my PTSD. And so far, it's, done, it's doing much better than medicine. I have to tell you that right now. I might go through some situations that you might not feel that is very unorthodox, that you might feel that's very unorthodox, but trust me, it's better than medicine. Get, dealing with it, going out there, being active with the community, trying to do something positive, trying to do motivating, motivational things helps. Feeling good about yourself helps make a cake for someone it helps make some food for someone it helps but with that said everyone talk to you guys in the next video